Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCSE ICT Pass Paper question. This is paper two, the practical paper. And as always, there's a link in the description to this paper, the mark scheme and all the files you need. So data files you need for this are skiing, fact sheet, holiday, website and images. Now always be sure to read the instructions on the first page. It's quite clear instructions there what you need to do. The total marks are out of 100. Attempt all questions and print everything out. Because you're going to be handing that in to the examiner at the end. So you need to have access to a printer and you need to put a treasury tag through everything. Now these are instructions to candidates. You've got two sections, A and B. This is pretty standard stuff. You must make sure your name is on everything you print off. So candidate name, centre number, etc. on every document. So here we've got section A. It's got graphics, database and web authoring for 50 marks. You need holiday website images folder. Section B, spreadsheet, word processing. Again, 50 marks, total marks out of 100. Now it's really important that you read this scenario. And in particular, you look at the house style there. So you can read the scenario there. It's a skiing holiday company. And you've got a telephone number and a website address there and an email address there. And you've got the house style. This is really important. It's really important that you make a note of this. The house style for the company documents is serif font for the company name, logo position, top right. Now, if you're not sure what a serif font is, I've covered this in previous videos, but it's basically a font that has kind of the little serifs on it. The font that you're looking at in front of you here is a sans serif font. So it's for a serif font, think Times New Roman is the obvious example. So with all that out of the way, let's go in and look at section A. So task A1. Sam needs the logo to be used on some of the company's documents. Open a new word processing document. Enter task A1. Your name, candidate number, centre number in the, head, in the header. Save the document as task A1. So let's go and do that now. So here I am in Word and I double click at the top to put my details in. So I'll put in my name, centre number. Now, I also put um, in the header there as well, in capitals, task A1 and my details there and click close header and footer and then we're ready to start. So we go back to the question. So I need to create a logo and the logo must be fit for purpose and be a simple drawing that combines lines and shapes, represents skiing, include the company initials TSR. So at this point, I'd just like to refer back to the house style. Serif font for the company name. So the company name, TSR, needs to be in serif font. And there's going to be, this is the logo we're creating now. So just as long as I put the serif font on there, should be okay. But I need to have quite a simple drawing there with lines and shapes. So to create this, I'm going to go to PowerPoint. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, like the 2020 paper, you, you'll know that I've done videos on how easy it is to create a logo using PowerPoint. Don't need expensive, fancy graphics software. You can just use PowerPoint now to create a logo. So I'm just going to move the screen up so you can see all the options here and see what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go to insert. Okay. And I'm going to create my logo and I'm just going to use the shapes tools. Okay. So it needs to represent skiing. So I think, okay, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to start with, I'm going to create a box for my logo. My logo is going to go in a box and it doesn't matter if it's big, it should be big. I'll explain why later. And I'm going to shape fill. I'm going to choose no fill. Okay. But I'm going to change the outline to black. So black outline. That's where I'm going to create my logo. So back to shapes. So I'm thinking skiing. Okay. Simple logo with shapes on there. I'm thinking skiing. I'm thinking mountains. So I'm going to have mountain shape there and I'm going to go like that perhaps push it in a bit like that perhaps move this across like that now another shape and I'm going to choose I'm going to keep with this theme of the kind of peaks there but this one I'm going to make it a slightly lighter blue I'm going to make the back one lighter blue this one's going to be a darker blue 
because what I'm trying to represent is the back one's in the distance, this one's in the front. I'm going to do another one and it's going to be in the very front and that's going to have, that's going to be the lightest color blue. So just push that up like that and this I'm going to push like that and this is going to be the darkest shade. So I think that one there, I'm going to choose that and this one's going to be the dark blue there. Okay, now if we go back to the question. So simple drawing that combines lines and shapes. Yep. Represents skiing. Yep. I've done mountains on mine. Include the company initials TSR. So that's what I need to do now. So back in PowerPoint, and I'm going to need to insert and I'm going to use Word Art for this. Just keep it really, really simple. Now this needs to be a serif font. So I'm going to click on Home and I'm going to choose a serif font. So scroll down. I think I'm going to go all the way. There's plenty here. I could choose Courier. Uh, I'm going to choose the classic font there, Times New Roman. So we just go all the way down, scroll all the way down, Times New Roman, bold and italic. Now, I think that could be a bit bigger, too big. So there's a bit of white space there. So I think I might just kind of fill that like that. And I'm pretty happy with that. That'll do. It doesn't need to be amazing. It's three marks. It doesn't need to be amazing to get the three marks. As long as it's got lines and shapes, it's got the company name on there in a serif font, you're okay. So let's turn it into an image. So we select it and I choose right click, save as picture. And I'm going to save that. Now in your exam, you save it in the proper folder and we go back to the exam. We'll see where we need to save it. It should be saved as TSR logo. So as long as you save it as TSR logo, it can be any image type. I would choose PNG, click save. So now we've created our logo and we can close down PowerPoint. Don't actually need to save it because it's there. So let's scroll down. Do not insert a copy of the logo into document task A1. So let's go now insert that into there. So insert pictures and we'll browse to where we saved it. So here's my logo and it looks pretty good. And I can shrink down the size if I want to, shrink it up or down as I want there. And because I made it big, it doesn't matter how much I enlarge it, it still doesn't look pixelated, it still looks really good. So I'm really pleased with that. And that'll be three marks. So move on to A1B. Sam wants to include the logo in the existing document as an image saved as a mountain skier in the images folder. Edit the image to add the name of the company, include the logo. Save the image as mountain skier to in the images folder. Insert a copy of the image into document task A1. Save as task A1. So we're gonna go back to PowerPoint and we're gonna work on this one now. So I need to browse in the data files to images and the image is called mountain skier JPEG and I need to insert that into PowerPoint here, and that's fine. So let's go and look back at what remind ourselves what we need to do with that. We need to add the name of the company and include the logo to go back to this. And let's add the name of the company. Now, the name of the company is the ski run. So I'm going to write that properly. It's TSR, but I want to write out the name properly there. And I need again, I need to choose a serif font and I'm going to make it bold and italic and I'm going to put that there. So it doesn't say where to put the name of the company or include the logo. We just need to put that on there. So let's put the logo on there as well. So we go back to insert and we'll reinsert the logo. So it's quite big. So I'm just going to shrink it down. Now just go back to the house dial and just double check something now. Just make sure logo position top right. So we really need to make sure that we tick that house dial box there. So go back to here, logo position top right. So that has to go in there. So I'm going to move this up and across and put my logo in the top right there. I think I might make this a little bit bigger because it looks to me, it looks a bit small. I think that could be stand to be a little bit bigger there. Now notice my logo hasn't got the white background there. Um, if that bothers you, what you could do is 
just simply insert a shape for that to sit on. I think I might just do that and make that white there. And I'm going to put my logo on top of there. So I'm going to right click, OK. And we need to order bring to front. I think that just looks a little bit better than just a kind of transparent background there. So I'm going to shrink that in and just fit that on there like that. Now I'm happy with that. So we need to again save that as an image. So I've grouped it and then I need to right click on it again, save as picture and I need to save this as picture and just remind myself it should be saved as Mountain Skier 2. So let's do that. Save. And the final bit of this is for me to insert a copy into task A1 and then I would then go and print task A1. So let's go insert that now. So I'm really pleased with that. And now I can send that to the printer. Obviously make sure that task A1 is on the top in the header and definitely your name, center number and candidate number there. Okay, really, really important that you do that. So that completes task A1 for five marks. Task A2. Sam has collected information about her guests and their ski holiday accommodation. He's saved the information in the database holiday. The database has three tables, hotel, guest and booking. There's a bit of information about that. Structure of the hotel table is this. So you can see the field name there, data type and a description, guest, field name, data type, description and booking. Pretty straightforward. Open a new word processing document orientation to landscape. So let's change that orientation to landscape. We go to layout, orientation, and choose landscape. Now I'm guessing they say choose landscape because you can be doing some screenshots and it needs to be, they want it in landscape form. And task A2, candidate name into the header. So task A2, details, etc. That must include your name, etc. Okay, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna write that. Save the document as task A2. Sam wants to use a form to add extra hotels in the hotel table. Open the holiday database, open the hotel table. So here's the holiday database. Now if we just go to database tools there and we have a look at the relationships, we can see one to many and then many to one there. So you've got guest booking. Okay, one guest can have many bookings there. Um, a booking can belong to one hotel, but a hotel can have many bookings. So that's one to many relationship there. So we just close that just so you've seen that. And it said to open go back to here, open the hotel table and create a form. So here's the hotel table. I need to go to create and I need to create a form. And I'm going to use the form wizard. Now it must have the table, table hotel there selected because I've already got that open. That's already there. Double arrows there to move them across. Next, next. Okay, I need to, what title do you want to give the form? We can change that later, but I want to modify the form's design. Finish. Okay, so here's my basic form that I need to edit. I need to go back to the question there. Form must, must match the house style. So that means the logo's got to be positioned in the top right. And we'll put something sensible here. Right. The ski run. Okay, and again, I'm going to choose Times New Roman for my font there. I'm just going to leave that as that. I'm going to get the logo on there now. So go to go to, I'm going to insert image and browse to my folder there where I save my logo in. I'm going to place it on there. Now this is a lot easier. So just a little tip now. I think this is a lot easier than using insert logo. Because when I try to insert logo, I seem to have quite a few problems with the placement of it. Just inserting an image seemed to work better. I'm going to edit the title and I'm just going to include the word hotel. Because I'm just looking at the mark scheme there and to specifically say that it should include the words hotel. But that should be also still be a serif font like that. So let's go back to the question. Okay. Suitable title will be customized. So the width of the hotel ID field is two centimeters. So this is the hotel ID field here. Um, I'm just going to move this across. It should be two centimeters in width. So I need to edit this here. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to change that to two. So that's now two centimeters in width there. Hotel name field is six centimeters. So hotel name field needs to be six centimeters. So go to the property sheet again and width, and that needs to be exactly six centimeters. So I'm just going to delete that there. So that is exactly six centimeters there. You can take a screenshot of that if you want to. Save the form as hotel underscore form. Take a screenshot of your form design view showing the changes of the field width. Paste the screenshot into A2. Let's do that now. So we're going to file and save as, save object as, save as. Okay, so it needs to be saved specifically as hotel underscore form. So click OK. And now that's saved. Now it does mean I've got two forms there, but I can delete that other one later. I'm just going to close that now. And I can delete that extra form there. I'll just cut that. So we open this up again because there's a bit more we need to do. We need to show this in design view. So you go to hit over here, we go to view and design view, and we need to see those properties that we've changed. So we're back over here. We can see the width there is two centimeters. So we'll print screen that and put that into there. And then we'll also print screen that other one there, print screen, and we'll paste that into there. If you want to, you can highlight the changes there. I'm sure the examiner will be looking out for that and know what to see there. Resave as task A2. So we'll save it now and do not print at this stage. Task A2B. Another hotel must be added to the list of hotels offered. Use the hotel underscore form you created in A2A to add these details to the hotel table. Back to that form and we'll add these details here. It's obviously easier when you've got the paper in front of you. So view design, we'll go to form view. Now we need to click on the end, last record and go to next and we're going to add it here. So hotel ID H201, hotel name, Keltische Berg. So make sure we spell it properly. Yep, resort Innsbruck. So we can select Innsbruck there. Ski pass, yes. And price range is medium. Okay. And that is done. Take a screenshot of the completed form. Paste into A2, but do not print. And that is two marks. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. I'm going to go back to here. And we're going to put return. We're going to paste that in there. A2C. Sam wants a list of hotels that are in Obergurgle. I booked for 14 nights, include a ski pass. Create a query on the hotel and booking tables to produce the list. Okay, it's going to do that now. So go back to access. We need to close that. Okay, so what we need to do now is create our query. So we need to create and query design. I don't want to use the wizard. Now, it is booking and hotel. I need both of these tables here. Okay, so... I'm going to go through this now and I'm not sure, quite sure how I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to add all of these fields in. I don't need to show them in my final query results, but I want them in there. Okay. So location there. So first thing I need to do is go to resort and I need to type the resort in there and spell it correctly. And what I usually do with something like this is I run the query first just to check that that actually works. So yeah, that's resort there. That's okay. We'll do it bit by bit. So we go back to design view and we do the next section. So booked for 14 nights. So now I need to look at length of stay. That is in booking. Now it's dur duration of stay equals 14. So again, let's run that now. So that's narrowed that down still. Duration of stay 14. Okay, that's good. Let's keep going then to the next bit. So we're taking each bullet point at a time, one at a time, getting that to work, doing the next one, getting that to work, doing the next one, include a ski pass. Okay. So now I need to find the ones that include the ski pass. Okay. And that needs to be yes. So now again, I'm going to run that and ski pass, ski pass. Yes, that's great. Okay. Create a query on the hotel, produce the list, take a screenshot of the query design, paste copy of this query design into task A2. Save the query as obergurgle 14 y So let's save it first. File, save as, save object as. This is the object, not the database. 
and it needs to be saved as proper file name as obergurgle 14 y with no spaces save okay done screenshot paste print screen here underneath now you can make these look a bit more pretty you can crop them if you want to if you've got time i suggest that that's kind of cosmetic and for me i would i would leave that until i got everything to work and worry about cosmetics later because um, as long as it shows the evidence you're not going to get marked down for that right development now the list must Show only these fields in this order. Hotel ID, price range, hotel name. Let's do that now. So we only want to see, we don't want booking ID, we don't want guest ID, we want hotel ID. Okay, we want that. Price range, we don't want that, we don't want that, we don't want that. Let's go and find price range, okay. So I want price range, and what else did I need? Hotel name. So I don't want ski pass, I want hotel name. But it needs to be in a specific order. And the order was hotel ID, price range, hotel name. So hotel ID comes first, then price range. So the easiest way to, to deal with this, because price range has got to come before hotel name, is just simply drag that like that. So run that again, and it should look like this. It's not quite finished though. Descending order of hotel ID. Let's do that now. So we go back to design view, hotel ID sort, descending order run and it should like look like that paste into a2 so we print screen again underneath here again if you want to take the time to crop it and make it look a bit better you can do i would suggest again that is cosmetic and do that only when you've finished everything and you've got time to spare otherwise don't worry about that too much so that is three marks there so we can now move on to a2d open the guest table so now i can close that yes i will um, save this yes i will save that okay now i open the guest table here sam wants a list of the guests who were born in 1990. the list must include the guests born in 1990. only those fields here sorted into its ascending order of date of birth Create a, create a query on the guest table to find the information. Save it as 1990 underscore query. Let's do that now. So we go back to create and query design. And now we need to double click on guest. So let's put all these fields in. Now, date of birth. If we just go back and look at the guest table, we can see that the date of birth is formatted in a way that says, um, for example, 1204. 05 2000 it doesn't actually just say 1990 so we need to use something in here called like i need to type in like quotation marks star star okay for day slash star star slash 1990 okay to find all years of 1990 there so now I'll go back to query design and press run now, I admit I made a mistake. Star star turned out to be um, quotation marks. So let's run that again, and that works. So it's really important that it looks exactly like that. So we run that again, and these were all the people that are born in 1990. There, so back to design view. Let's go back to the question now. Show only these fields in this order. Email, first name, date of birth. So we want email, yep. Yeah first name, yep, yeah, and date of birth, and it needs to be in that order. Email, so we need to drag that first. Email, first name, date of birth. Run, be sorted into ascending order of date of birth. So back to design view, date of birth should be in ascending order. Run, and it should look like this, with Ziggy at the top there. He was born on the 4th of February, 1990. So save the query as 1990 underscore query take a screenshot of the query design so let's save it first remember file save as object it's an object not a database 1990 underscore query save screenshot of the design so back to design print screen and then paste you can take the time again to crop it when you've got everything to work
that's just kind of beautification. It's not really that important. So that's that done. Do not print at this stage. Sam wants to produce a database report based on the 1990 query. Create a database report to show those results. Logo, house style, suitable title, only require fields, show records sorted as required. One side of A4, easy to read, saved as 1990 report. Details in the footer, let's go and do that now. Let's come out of this, we go to create, and we use, we need to create a report. We use the report wizard, and we need to make sure we choose 1990 underscore query. We want all those fields, next, next, okay. I've already sorted the data, so I shouldn't need to do anything here, next. If not, I can come back and look at that again, next. Okay, now it needs to be saved as 1990 underscore report, not query. So let's edit that now. Modify the reports design, finish. So again, we need to include a suitable title. Okay, so obvious one here would be people, don't misspell it, born in 1990. Now again, I need the logo in there. It needs to be top right. And remember what I did last time? Okay, I didn't insert logo, I inserted an image and it's already there for me, it's ready to go. Okay, now, suitable title, only require fields, sort the records as required. Okay, let's just go to view and print preview. That looks okay, that's in the correct order, that's in ascending order from 4th of February down to 29th of the 12th. Okay, but I think we could improve it a little bit more. For a start, we need to include a footer at the bottom. Now, in the bottom needs to be my details, candidate number in the center of the page footer. So I need to be working down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a label there, okay? And put my details there. And if you just simply drag that into the footer, that should appear there. And just try and center it as much as possible and that should be okay. Let's just go and have a look at that in print preview view. Okay, it's not quite centered, so I think um, I'll take the time. I'm gonna now, I'm gonna center it there like that and just see what that looks like. So print preview, that's better. I think that, that will do. So my details are centered there. One side of A4, yes it is. Save the report, 1990 score report, print this, okay? So we would then go to print preview and then we click on print and print to our chosen printer there. And that completes that section for six marks. A to E, this is relationship for the holiday database. So we can see that there. I'm not quite sure why the relationship is broken there, but we can see that there. Enforce referential integrity. Answers questions in document task A2. Now I'm going to type on here, just, just ease, ease of use and just to speed things up. If I come to switch between applications, it's going to, it's going to slow things down a bit. So the first question there, identify the type of relationship that will be needed between the hotel table and the booking table. Well, we've already seen that. It was a one to many. So that's one mark. Explain one reason why referential integrity should be enforced for relationships in a database. Now, referential integrity is a form of data validation. It makes sure invalid data cannot be entered. So we tick that box to make sure that we have that referential integrity there. Number three, state the name of the table that would have its data entered last. So if we look back at the relationship, it's the center table. So both tables, hotel and guest, would be filled in first, then booking would be filled in last. So the database table that would have its data entered last is booking. Explain one reason why like, and then quotation marks star house star quotation marks would be used in a database search, two marks. Now my answer here is it would return any occurrence of hotels with house in their name, because without it, there'll be no be no hotel with just the name house. So that completes A2 for a total of 24 marks. Task A3, open a new word processing document, enter task bit A3, your name, candidate number and sentence number in the header. Now I've already covered this um, earlier on in the video, you know how to do that now. So I'm gonna skip that bit and go straight to look at the website question that we've got here. Sam wants you to create two web pages for the TSR website. Content for the web page is stored in the file website. So what you need to do to start with is make a folder. 
I called my website and I put all the images in there and the content for the website there as well. And you can see I've saved my images in there as well. So make a root folder for everything to go in. Then it makes just, just makes things easier. We've got the image in there and nothing gets lost. So we're making two pages, home and ski lesson. Both web pages must be saved as .html. Create the design based on this wireframe here and we need to use his HTML elements. Later on, we'll need to do screenshots of the HTML code to be able to see that we've done that. Now, just a word of caution here. Some people ask me if they can create the web page in Publisher. Yeah, of course you can create a web page in Publisher quite easily. Problem is, you can't demonstrate HTML elements. So that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Software I use is called Composer, and I've done previous video where I've used Composer before. Kind of running out of options really nowadays for web authoring. Composer is a piece of software I'll link to in the description. It's already 10 years old and you may have some problems downloading it, particularly Mac users won't be able to run it. But it's what we've got at the moment. It's either that or use, um, perhaps use Dreamweaver, but I find the later versions of Dreamweaver are particularly complicated and not really suited to this kind of question. So I'm going to use Composer, and again, I'll link to it in the description. You can download it if you want to. So now let's look at what we need to do. We need to create a home page based on this design. You see we've got company name there, page title, image, etc. Now, what does it say there? If you look back at the house style, you need to have the logo in the top right-hand corner. So I'm going to need to do that. So now I'll go to Composer and I'll open up Composer now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use tables. So I'm going to create a table one by two there. And I'm going to place my title in here, the ski run. And I'm going to make that H1. I'm going to center that. And in the top right hand corner, I'm going to place an image, my logo. Now, I don't want alt text in there. We'll go over that later, but I don't want alt text in there. Obviously, that's a little bit too big. So just shrink it down there, and I think we'll justify that over there. What I might do is just, okay, let's save it. So this should be called home. And see, I've already got a home, so I'll just save it as home too. Now, as you go through this, it is worth just opening that up and just seeing what that looks like. Now, it's not great. I need to get rid of the border of the table. So we go back into Composer and we'll just edit this table here. Table cell properties. Right click table cell properties there. Just go to table and I don't want any border pixels there. Click OK. I will just change that to zero and click OK. That looks better. Now just save that. Let's go back and refresh this. Have a look at what this looks like. That looks a bit better. So now we move down to the next part of what we need to do page title and we get the page title from this document here page title is all about the ski run so come down underneath there and i'm going to type that in that's all about uh, i'm not sure that's got capitals in every letter it has so to specifically say that that should be h2 and underline so let's go and do that let's highlight it h2 and underlined and I'll just move that up a bit Oop, as much as possible. That will do there. Okay. Now we will, we'll leave that there as it is. Maybe that should be centered. So I think I'll try and center that. Okay. That looks good. So now what I need is column down the left hand side for my links, introductory text in the middle and two images. So do that. I'm going to go back to using tables again. I'm going to insert a table. So I need it to be three. I'm going to create a three by two table. I'll just create a three by three table. So let's format the table because I don't want to see the table there. So we will just format that and we'll change the border to zero pixels. And using tables to create web pages isn't ideal, but with this software, it's probably the best way around that. Let's do the links down the left hand side first. So we'll create one called home. And then we need to create one called ski lessons. So in the middle here is going to go my text. So now I'm going to simply copy and paste that. Control C and Control V. Paste that in there. Now, I might just move that down a bit there. 
on the right hand side needs to go an image and I can choose what images they are. There should be two and there should be one underneath the other. So I'm going to start with inserting an image, browse that folder, go to my website here. I'm going to choose that one and open that. So you can put alt text on there. I'm going to type that in now. Dimensions, custom, and we're wanting 200 by 200 there. Click OK. Great, that looks really good. Let's get the other image underneath. Browse to the folder again, and I'm going to put some text in there. Skis. Dimensions, again, custom. Change that to a 2, 200 by 200. Click OK. Now, quick save. Let's go and have a look at what that looks like. Okay, starting to come together. It looks pretty good to me. So keep going and keep building the page. So we'll go down. Let's add the please contact us on email for further information. Let's add that now. So we need to scroll down. Please contact. So just double click, double check what that says. Please contact us on email address. Now the email address, where do we get that? That's back up here. Remember, in the house style section, and I want to copy that. Be careful to click, when I click on it, it opens that up. Now, okay, you'll have to type that in and make sure you don't get that in wrong. On here, I have the luxury of being able to copy and paste, but you won't have that in your exam. So paste that in, go back to that page and just check for further information. Now, this specifically should be a mail to, so I'm going to highlight that. I'm going to copy it again. I'm going to go to insert and go to link and paste that in there. The above is an email address, so it will create a mail to. If I show you the source now, we can see that mail to that. You're going to need that. That has to be a mail to. So back to design. Okay. Save that. Now, refresh this. Okay. Doesn't look great but it's what, what they want is what we're supposed to do, okay? What we're not going to do is kind of decide for them on there. That's the design they've given us. That's the parameters we've got. So we need to use that. I'm just going to move that up a bit like that, just to maybe tidy it up a bit. And if I can, if it lets me try and move that. No, that didn't work. I'm going to have to leave that like it is. Now, this looks okay here, but we could possibly have a bit more space there, space that out. Just save that, and then we'll have a quick refresh. We'll see what this looks like now. Okay, it's not going to be perfect there. That isn't necessarily centered, so I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'm going to center that there and maybe push that up a bit. Save, refresh. Okay, I think the problem is that's good enough. In your exam, just be careful not taking time to do stuff like that, that really isn't going to gain you any extra marks. You want things to look perfect, I understand that, but just consider the time you've got. Good enough is good enough. Let's look at the background colour, blue-grey. We'll change that now, and then we'll change the text colour for introductory text to white. Let's change the background colour now. Okay, so we need to go to Format, and we need to go to Page Colours and Background. And we need to change, to go to Custom Colours, we need to change Background, now, a specific, specific colour there, hash 98AFC7. Let's type that in, AFC7. Click OK. Now, won't do the text just yet. That's the colour I want, the kind of blue colour. So now I need to change the colour for the introductory text to white, FFFF, etc. Highlight the text, format, text colour, white, OK. Done. Now, we are going to create some links here. So right now, we'll insert a hyperlink because I'm going to need to do that anyway next. Actually, I think I'll leave that for now. I'll talk about that later. Next thing we're going to have to do after this is create the second page. One of the, just last thing we need to do there, one of the image must link to www.theskirun.net. Let's do that now. So highlight the image, insert link www.the ski run dot net click ok done save ok let's have a refresh does that work yep obviously the ski run dot, dot net doesn't exist let's check this mail to that should open this yep that works obviously that's not going to work now because it's not an actual email address but that's fine 
Good. Include appropriate content. We've done that. Make sure the email address is an email link. We've done that. Save the homepage as index. So it should be saved as index. So we do save as, and now we'll type in index. You can always delete home later if you saved it like that. I'd recommend you save it as soon as you do any work and you keep looking to see what it looks like on the actual, in, in Chrome or Firefox, whatever you use, Safari, whatever you use. Okay, take screenshots of the code to show these elements. Let's do that now. So I'm not going to take some screenshots, but I'll show you how to do that. You need to go to the source, okay? So print screen this, this section here, you might want to highlight it, print screen that. What else do you want to print screen? The title, the title being H1. So it might be easy if we do split and we click on that, and we print screen that, that's the title there. Click on that, we print screen that, H1, that should be H1 there. What about the back background and the mail to? Let's go down and do that. So the mail to there, we print screen that. And the background, I think we need to see the whole page. So background color, we need to find the BG background and it is up here, we print screen that. Okay, do not print at this stage. So you put, make your screenshots, put them into a Word document, but you don't print. This is the easy bit. This is quite, this question is quite nice because it allows you just to resave an old page and make it as a new one. So it saves us quite a lot of time. Create the ski lessons page by resaving the home page as ski lessons. Right, let's go and do that now. So go back to design, file, save as. It should be saved as ski lessons. Now I do have a ski lessons page, so I'm going to save mine as ski lessons too, but you should save it just as ski lessons. Okay, I'm going to close that now because I don't want the home open. I'm going to reopen that. It's a bit strange in this software because it looks like you're working on the home page there, but you're not. It, it's just kind of a bit off-putting. I'm not sure why that says that though, because I've saved that, but that's just the way the software is. Make the following changes to the ski lessons. Page title, ski lessons. Let's go and edit that, okay? Easy. Delete that. Press the insert there, insert doesn't work. Ski lessons. Delete the introductory text. Okay. This needs to go. Gone. Okay. What now? Create a table. Include information from the website document, a one pix border. Link the two pages together. Right. This is a table we're going to create on this page here. That are, I make that one, two, three columns. 3x3. Three three. So let's make a 3x3 three three table and we'll insert that there. Insert table. So it's a table within a table effectively. It's going to be 3x3. Three three. Actually, it needs to have the fourth column there as well. So press tab and add the fourth one. Time, area to meet, area to meet, instructor, instructors. So I can just simply copy and paste this now. Control C, again, highlight. Control C, Control V, that in. So now I pasted the whole lot in there. Now it has changed the font. If I'm not happy with that font style, I can change that. If you're not happy with the font, you can change that by going to Format Font. But I think I'll just leave that as it is. What I'm not happy with is the images. They've kind of gone over to this side a bit. So I'm just going to click that and click that so they look more consistent with the first page. And that's the table done there. Create links between the two pages. By the way, the one pix border is already done by default, so we're going to leave that as it is. Let's create links to the... So we need a link to the home page, so we go to insert and link, and we browse to the home. That should be index. Click OK. Now, I don't need to link on ski lessons to the ski lessons page. That's where we are already, so I'm going to save that. I'm going to open the index, and I'm going to link, link it up now. So this should link to ski lessons. Let's do that. Insert link and we'll cr create our link there. Click OK. Let's save that. Let's have a look at that, what that looks like now. Refresh. So we'll just go to index and does that link work? Yes. Does that link work? Yeah. Good. So that's that done. Resave the ski lessons as ski lessons. Done that. Save the index as index. Screenshots. Take a screenshot of that. Screenshots of the HTML table, page links. You can create screenshots looking at the code, paste the screenshots. So just a reminder, if I want to see the code, I'll just go to this here. If I want to see this code, split, and you can see the table there. You can screenshot that, save, 
do not print. A3B. Sam wants you to make these changes to the HTML code for the home page. Text color for introductory text, indigo. 4B0082. Let's do that now. So we go to home page. We want to change this. So format, font, text color. Um, we're going to type that in manually. 4B0082. Okay. It should look like that. Indigo. Right align the contact details. So these should be on the right hand side. That is easy enough to do. Right align there. Right aligned. Done. Resave index. Take screenshots made to the HTML code. Do not screenshot all the code, just the code to show the changes. Let's do that now. Split. Click on here. Okay. We can see the color there. Print screen that. Okay. Resave it. Now, we're into some theory questions now. This code would use in a previous website, and then you've got that code in the brackets there. Answer these questions in document task A3. I'm going to, so you would write an A3, but for time's sake, I'm going to type on here. So first question, state one reason why the code will not display the image. Now, it won't display the image because there needs to be quotation marks around the image. E.g. slalom.jpg with quotation marks around it. Two, explain one reason why alt text has been used on the image. Alt text is used to help people who are visually impaired. So when they hover their mouse or click on the image, it will tell them what the image is. So there's my answer. Some people are visually impaired and the alt text will tell them what the image is. We'll scroll down and look at the next question. Three, one advantage of using a template and setting up web pages. Um, quite easy to ensure consistency. So each page looks like the one before which helps you to know that it's the whole website, they're all together, it looks more consistent. So there's my answer there, this is to ensure consistency. And that completes A3 for a total of 21 marks. And it also completes section A for a total of 50 marks. Section B, the ski run offers holidays in Europe. The spreadsheet skiing contains information on ski equipment and ski slopes. Two worksheets, members and details. Open the spreadsheet skiing, open the worksheet members, and to task B1, your name, candidate number, and sentence number in the header. So this is a spreadsheet here. So we need to go and look at the header. So we go to view and go to page layout, and then I can get to the header. Then I can enter my details there. I'm going to put them in the center for now. Click out of it, and now we can go back to view and back to normal to get back to here. So we we'll scroll down and have a look at task B1A. Insert a new row at the top of the spreadsheet and enter the heading Ski Information 2021. So just simply right click there, insert, and we're going to insert a new row here. Merge and center cells A1 to E1. I'm going to do that first before I, before I add the details I want in there. So I'll highlight the cells there and go to home and use this one here. This is merge and center. So now I'm going to type that Ski Information 2021 into there. Like that. Now it says number three, font size 24, font style serif, font enhancement bold. So let's do that. Font size 24, serif font. Now, as you've seen in earlier parts of the videos, I always use Times New Roman for that. I think it's just the best one to use for that. So we use Times New Roman and it needs to be bold as well. That's that done. Insert in the header, the text completed and automated date. So we need to go back to view, go back to the header. We need to insert the text completed like that. And we need to insert a date. And I do that by going to header and footer there and I insert the current date. We click out of that and go to view and back to normal. And that's one. That's that one done. Insert a blank row between the heading and the first row of information. Format this row to be approximately half the height of the other rows. Let's go and do that now. So need to here, right click, insert. Now each of these rows is 14.5 high. So that needs to be approximately 7.5. So go to row height, 7.25. We'll type in 7.25 there, click OK. And that's that done. Task B1B. Sam wants you to use spreadsheet tools to analyze the data for the information included. Use one spreadsheet function to display the cost of equipment hire. So we go back to the spreadsheet here. 
we've got details, we've got the cost of equipment higher there. And that links to whether they're level one beginner, intermediate or advanced. And that's how much it costs to hire the equipment. So we need to use a VLOOKUP to put information in this column. So I'm going to start by typing equals VLOOKUP brackets lookup value that comma where from okay we highlight the table here okay comma from which row which column does that information come from it's column two comma always true okay close brackets so that's 230 is that correct beginners 230 yes that is correct okay what i'm going to do now is going to save myself some time i want to copy this all the way down so I'm going to put dollar a dollar thirteen. This is absolute cell referencing because now what that will allow me to do is copy that down and put the correct values in all of that column. I'm going to have to do that anyway, so we use that anyway. It's just something we'll have to do later, but we'll do that now. So intermediate should be two eighty. That's correct, and advanced should be three forty. That is correct. Okay, so that is that one done. There, let's go to number two. Use one spreadsheet function to display the cost of the ski pass that includes 20% discount if the cost of the equipment hire is more than 300 euros. So if the cost of the hire is over 300, so 340, then they need to get they need to get 20% off. And that is 20% off the cost, cost of the ski pass. And the ski pass there is 150 euros so we're going to construct a formula here if c4 is greater than 300 okay so value of true okay details so now okay details that cost there okay so value of true details times multiplied by 80 percent value if false is just that close brackets see if that works so 230 should be a cost of 150 because that's not over 300. So I want to copy this formula down. So I'm going to use absolute cell referencing there. $B, $18 there. $B, $18 there. So let's see if it works. We'll copy it down now and see if it works. So 340, yeah. So that is 20% off, which is 120 so that looks like that worked. 280 is under 300, so that should just be 150. And that's worked all the way down. So that is three marks. We're going to the next question. Enter a formula to calculate the total cost of the equipment hire and ski pass. Okay, so we need the total cost there. That's going to be really simple. It's equal to that plus that. And we don't need absolutes our reference, and we can copy that all the way down. B1C. Format the members worksheet so that Currency value show the currency euros with no decimal places. Let's do that first. The currency, these are all currency values here. And we're just for formatting the members one there. So we need to go to home. And I need to choose currency. Default for me is pounds. But I need to go to more num number formats there. And instead of pounds, I want to choose euros. So scroll down or do a search till we find euros. So I'm just going to choose euros there and I'm just going to choose euro. Okay. Headings are wrapped to use the space efficiently. Let's do that now. So we need to wrap these headings. So just simply, um, what we're going to do, we click up here to wrap text and I double click here and then that's now wrapped. If I want to, you can format that and you can choose, um, top, align top if you want to. I think that looks a bit better. All data visible. So make sure all data is visible. That looks pretty visible to me. If not, we can just simply double click there, double click there. So it's all visible. Double click there, double click there, double click there, etc. I think I might just space that out a little bit there. I think that's a little bit better. The row and column headings and the page header are displayed when printed. So let's just go and have a look at that and we'll go and print. That looks okay to me. So I'll go back. So now you'd save that as task B1 and you print the worksheet in landscape showing values on one side of A4. So when we go to file and print to make sure that it is on one side of A4, it needs to be landscape as well. So I'm choosing landscape orientation. 
Now it's page one of one, so that works. But if it didn't, you could just simply go to scaling there and you could go to fit sheet on one page and then you press print. Print the members worksheet in landscape. We've just done that. We also need to show functions and formula are displayed without truncation. So we need to display the formula. So we go to formulas and show formulas there. Now, to specifically say no more than two sides of A4. So I think we'll just play about with that and just shrink that down till we do get that down to two sides of A4. Now there should be no truncation. So what that means is you should be able to see the full formula there. So if I go to file and print now, it says page one of one, that's actually printed on one page. So no more than two sides of A4. We've actually done that. Task B1D, open the worksheet details. Get back to here. It says, enter task B1, your name, candidate number in the header. So we go to details, we go to view, and we go to page layout, and we go to, we scroll up to top, and we can enter our details in the header. Remember to go to view and normal to get back to it. Enter a formula to calculate the percentage length of each ski run type. So what it wants to be is a percentage of that. So this as a percentage of that. So what we need to do is a formula in there and we will do equals B5 divided by that. Okay, now what I want to do is multiply all that by 100. Now I want to copy this down. So I'm going to use absolute cell referencing. So put in dollar $B, dollar $2 and that will lock onto that value. And we'll just simply copy that down there. Now, what we can do here is to go to home and I'm going to format that to zero decimal places. And I'm also going to, I'm not going to make that as a percentage there. I'm going to leave that as it is, but you could put that as a percentage. Then you'd need to take away the multiply by a hundred, but that, that will work. Two, use one spreadsheet function to calculate the average length of all the ski runs. So I need to put an average in there and I'm simply going to use equals average. Actually, I'm not going to put it in there, sorry. I'm not going to misspell it. <laughs> Equals average. Okay, highlight the three and it should come up with that. So average B5 to B7. And that completes task B1 for 21 marks. Task B2. Sam wants to know the numbers of members who are level three. Filter the members worksheet to show only the level three members. So go back to here, so go to members and we need to apply a filter. So we need to go to sort and filter, a filter. So now we can click on the arrow and uncheck select all and check display only the data for member name, total cost columns, member name, total cost columns. So we need to right click, hide those columns there. Now I am still in formula view, so I need to get out of that into formulas show my formulas now this has happened if that happens don't panic just simply widen the column box save the spreadsheet as task b2 print the members worksheet showing the values so save it as b3 b2 and then we'll and that's two marks task b3 open a new word processing document enter your details in the header we've already covered that earlier so we assume we know what we're doing with that Go straight into task B3A. Sam wants you to create a chart to display the percentage of ski run lengths from the details worksheet. The chart must include a suitable title, label showing the percentage values, appropriate series names. And that's three marks. So I need to create a spreadsheet of this information here. Blue, red, and black, and percentage ski length, not the kilometers. So I'll highlight that column, and I want to highlight this column here as well. Now, hold down the control button to do that. It's not particularly easy on a laptop. Hopefully in your exam, you might be using a desktop computer to make that slightly easier. So now go to insert and choose an appropriate chart. And I'm going to choose a pie chart for this. And we need to edit the title, ski run length and percentage. And what I want to do is add some data to this. So simply right click there, add data labels here and data labels. And I really want that to be percentage. So well, I think I'll leave that as it is because it does say in the mark scheme, percentage must either be in the title or on the data labels. Now, as this hasn't got percentages on there, it's going to be hard to do that. If you did want that, what you'd need to do is we go to that 
and we take out multiply by 100 and then we go to format and we choose percentage there and obviously decrease that there and now that will be um, as a percentage the format percentage there and that one take out the multiply by 100 and again we format that as percentage so now my percentage is going to appear on there if you wanted to do that the first one is okay so now we save that as chart take a screenshot paste it into the document don't print and we're going to do that because we know how to take a screenshot and paste it to a document task b3b use the members worksheet to display only the data for member name member type and ski pass cost go back to our spreadsheet go back to members so that's already got some formatting on there so i'm going to go back to my original spreadsheet here and back to members so you would have saved that as task b1 you can just simply reopen now it does say members worksheet display only data for member name member type and ski pass cost member name member type and ski pass cost so that is really easy to do you just simply highlight the column we want to remove so i don't want equipment hurt just simply right click hide ski pass want that want that, want that but we don't want this column here simply right click and hide then we take a screenshot at this stage task b3c answer these questions using document task b3 sam has a worksheet showing the star ratings of the hotels the members will be staying in the function equals count if has been used in cell b15 describe how this function works with data so this is slightly different now this is what you're going to type your answer in and to save space i'm just going to simply write on this document here okay so the count if looks in the cell ranges b3 to b14 it compares the values of the cell to match the content of cell b7 it returns a value of three state the late the feature labeled a it's the named range save and print so that completes b3 and that completes the spreadsheet section for another total of eight marks task b4 open a new word processing document enter task b4a name candidate number and center number in the header we've already done that before in previous questions so we know how to do that save the document as task b4a sam wants you to create a fact sheet to show the price of ski lessons use the fact sheet document for this task so what we've got is this is the fact sheet and we are to use this to create the fact sheet instructions in italics so in italics there which is this here that's our instruction so welcome to the ski run ski lessons offered subheading heading etc which create that in word must follow the fact sheet document one side of a4 including the heading table information so let's get started so we're going to take this this is the heading here so i'm just going to simply copy and paste that into my document so be sure to choose that appropriate font for that and it needs to be a heading so i'm going to choose heading one there welcome to the ski run now i want to center that and I'm going to press return and go back to normal now i need to do the subheading so ski lessons off subheading and it's just simply copying and pasting that in and that needs it to be heading two. So we'll choose heading two there. Now I'm not gonna format the font, I'm just gonna stick with how it is, and move that up. That clearly is heading two. Now I'm into the body of the text, and I need to get this. So what I'm gonna do is just simply, rather than just copy that individually, I'm gonna copy the whole lot and put that in there. Now, there is a slight difference in the font size there, so I think this could be I'm going to make this size 12 because size 14 is quite big. I'm going to make that size 12 there. So that's a subheading. So I'm going to highlight that and choose an appropriate subheading. So this be heading three there would be useful. So obviously we need to delete the italics. That needs to come out. Private bullet. So we'll take that out and we'll make that a bullet there. Must be pre-booked sub, sub bullet. So if I press tab, it goes to a sub bullet like that so again with that we choose bullet and it automatically goes like that so with this one i want that to be just normal so i'm going to 
backspace that and just bullet that again. Now group needs to be bullet, so I just put that back one there so it just looked like a bullet. These are sub bullets here. And you can change the bullet style if you want. If you go here, you can choose different styles of bullets. I think I'm going to make that white like that so it looks like a sub bullet. It looks visually different to the actual bullet. And these three also need to be sub bullets. So make it a bullet and then we'll press tab, tab and tab. And again, I'll change these to that style of bullet. So I can see it's exactly exactly like a sub bullet. So delete all these things in brackets here. Now that's it, but if I wanted to add another bullet and I wanted it just to be a bullet, not a sub bullet, if I press return again, it goes back to being a bullet like that. So that's that done. And we need to look at what we need to do next. So now we need to create this table and it needs to look exactly like that. So I think what I'm going to do is going to copy that and paste that into here. So I can have that as a reference as I create that there. So we're going to insert a table. Now it's fairly complicated this because we've got one, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven rows there. And we've got some merging in. And we've also, we can see that we've got four columns and then we've got one column. So it's fairly complicated. So I'm just going to just get started with a four column table like that. It's going to take some time to create this and you just need to be patient. I would start if I were you with a four by sort of four by eight, maybe four by seven table, and then you can merge these cells. So we need to merge these cells here. So we're going to go to table, we're going to go to layout here, and we're going to merge cells. Now it seems to be defaulting to italics. I want to just take that out. So Sam's ski school. Now it says font color white, font style serif. So I can start by making, I'm going to start by making that font white. And so obviously you can't see it now because it's white on white, but I'm going to choose a serif font and I'm going to default to our old friend Times New Roman here. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman. Font size 28, so it's quite big. Text alignment center, vertically and horizontally. Now, Let's change the color of that cell to that dark blue. So what we need to do is change the shading here and I'm going to choose an approximate color, more colors that represents that dark blue. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Okay. It's not going to be exact, but as long as it's approximately like that. Now I'm going to leave that that size. I'm not going to make that any bigger. It is centered there. It doesn't say anything about um needs to be any more spaces than that. So let's go back and do the next bit. So we see we need to merge these cells as well because that's also merged. Private ski lessons. Now just be careful here. We're not going to merge the whole lot. I think if we look here it says 2020 2021. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to merge these cells. I'm not going to merge that because I need that to be on the right hand side there. So go back to layout and I'm going to merge these cells and I'm going to do this private ski lessons. And that doesn't want to be italic. So type that in. Font size 24, bold, left aligned. So bold, size 24. It's already left hand aligned. Doesn't say anything about the font. Um, it doesn't say anything about it being a serif font, so we're going to leave that as it is. Let's do the next one here. 2021, sorry, 2020, 2021, font size 20, right aligned. So we choose font size 20 and we right hand align that. Now I need to make these gray and I'm going to go to table design. I'm going to shade that in kind of mid gray like that. And I'm going to do that there shading as well. Now there isn't actually a board around that, but I'm going to leave that there. I think I'll leave it as it is because as long as we've got evidence of merging cells that we've done that, then that's okay. So now we need to copy this next bit. So two, three, four, five, and six hours AM. So I'll do that now. So two, three, four, five, six hours AM. Now that does look like it's a serif font. 
So we're going to choose our old friend Times New Roman and it does look like it's a kind of blue colour. So I'm going to go to shading and choose a light, a light blue shade there, like that. Then we need the prices in, in euros. Now I need to get the euro symbol in there. So I'm going to go to insert and I need to get the symbol in there. So I'm going to choose symbol here. And I can already see euro there. So I'm going to select euro, euro sign there. Now I need to write that all the way down in this column down to 420 euros. Okay. And now I need to put, fill in this column here and it says PM, PM. That is lowercase. So I'm just going to change that back there. If that happens, just control Z and you'll get rid of that. That must be lowercase. You need to follow it exactly. And again, that looks like a serif font. So I'm going to choose Times New Roman there. I'm going to go to table design and change the shading to blue. Now, looks like we need to move this perhaps across, but I think that's okay as it is. So what I need to do now is write 210 euros. So I'm just copying and pasting that euro symbol there. And this looks like it's all merged as well. So go to layout merge cells and we go to table design and we change that to the blue that we've used there okay now there are some more rows to add so we press tab 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 again and we can add a new row here and what i need to do here is i need to change that out of blue and just need to look down here group ski lessons font size 24 2021 to font size 40. So I'm going to merge these cells here. So go to table design, layout, sorry, and merge cells. Table design to change that to white. And I'm going to change that to gray in a minute because that needs to match the design. So group ski lessons. So we'll change that to size 24. Bold, left aligned. It is left aligned. So it doesn't say anything about serif font here. 2021 slash 20. Sorry, 2020 slash 2021. Make sure you get that right. Font size 20, right hand aligned. Okay, so font size 20, right hand aligned. And again, these are both gray. So we go to tables design, shading, and we choose gray again. So I need some more rows, press tab. I always see these rows aren't what I want because I need to have that split like that. So what I'm going to do First thing I'm going to do is change the font size down back to 12. Then I'm going to, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do actually is change the shading to white. Then I'm going to split these cells. So split that into four. So number of columns, two. Then I'm going to split that again. I'm going to split this one there. Split cells, number of columns, two. And this needs to be all be left hand aligned. So just going to highlight all this and just going to make sure it is all size 12 like that. That's better. And I'm going to press tab, tab again. Then I've got enough rows there. So one day, two days, three days. Now that isn't in bold and it looks like it's in a serif font. So let's get it out of bold. Let's get it into the serif font there. So. 100 euros, 216 euros, and 254 euros. Five days, six days, extra day. 282 euros, 308 euros, and 50 euros. Now, there is some color there, so I'm going to change this color. This column here needs to be in a sort of orangey pink color, so I'm going to choose that one, and this column here as well, that one. And that looks like that's completed. That pretty much matches that and that's that's okay I'm really pleased with that so I'm going to delete that now I just double check I'm happy with that yeah that's okay delete that I've done that good okay back to the fact sheet what does say here boxes with times days and monetary amounts must be set to Calibri size 16 so I didn't do that let's go back and do that now so that means all these things here I thought it was a, a serif font but it isn't so we'll set that to size 16 and we'll choose Calibri that one size 16 and that needs to be clear brief so I need to do these ones here as well so remember size 16 and Calibri just check we've done all of that I believe that's it I believe we completed that so I'm going to close that now and you would then save that so you would then save that and print that that is on one side of A4 so go to file and print it clearly is on one side of A4 it hasn't gone on to any other that any other 
size is there. Just make sure that it is, make sure that it's got your name on it when you send it to the printer in the header. So we scroll down and we've nearly finished now. So task B4B. So you open task B4B, you save it, and you're gonna print this. For time's sake, I'm just gonna write on this document. This is the written questions now. Okay, explain one improvement you would make to the table. Well, I think what I'd do is perhaps change the colors of the background and text so that text is easier to read. Number two, explain one reason why save as is used rather than save when saving a file. We use save as so we can specify the file name. If we just click save, then it uses the default name like doc1.doc, .doc, which is no use to us um, in a week's time, let alone in six months time when we need to open the document and find out what it is. We need to save it as a, su a suitable file name. So my answer is for two marks, save as allows you to choose a suitable file name so that you can save it with a meaningful name rather than the default. Number three, spelling and grammar tools have been used to check some of the text. Explain one reason why proofreading is still required. Now we use a spell, we use a proofread, we proofread it ourselves rather than just rely on the spell check because the word may be so badly spelled anyway that the spell checker has no idea what you're trying to spell. Um, it also might be used in the wrong context. For example, there, there, and there. So the spell checker won't pick that up anyway. It might not pick up a grammar error. Now that completes the paper. And that completes task B4 for 90 marks, section B for 50 marks, the total paper for 100 marks. I want to say big thanks for making it through to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please let me know in the comments how you get on and good luck with your mocks and your actual exams when you take them. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.